WKYT News starts now with breaking news. And good morning to you, Bill Brandt and Andrea Walker here at WKYT. Breaking news overnight, Donald Trump has been elected the 45th President of the United States. Good to have you along. We have all the details. Yes, it is Wednesday, November 9th, one day after that historic day yesterday. It was a long night for everybody, but the Associated Press called the race for Trump around 2.30 this morning. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell on Trump's win. After eight years of the Obama administration, the American people have chosen a new direction for our nation. President elect Trump has a significant opportunity to bring our nation together. We have full coverage this morning. We are going to begin with Craig Boswell. He is live this morning in Washington. He has the latest on this historic election and again president-elect Donald Trump now ready to take charge in Washington. Let's go to the report. Donald Trump called for national unity after the bitter and divisive campaign. The businessman and television reality star is elected the 45th president of the United States. <laughs> President-elect Donald Trump emerged on stage at his election night headquarters in New York, cheered by crowds of supporters. It is time for us to come together as one united people. The Republican nominee defied expectations Tuesday, racking up crucial victories in the battleground states of Florida, North Carolina, and Ohio, among others. Earlier, Hillary Clinton called Trump to concede the race. She congratulated us, it's about us, on our victory. And I congratulated her and her family on a very, very hard fought campaign. Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, addressed crowds of supporters gathered at her election night headquarters. You know, and I want every person across the country who supported Hillary to know that your voices and your enthusiasm mean so much to her. Despite wins in Virginia, Colorado, and Nevada, the Democratic nominee failed to carry many of the battleground states President Obama won in 2012. Many of those gathered to see a Clinton victory rally left in tears. As the results trickled in, crowds of demonstrators remained outside the White House well into the morning as they anxiously await the end to the bitter presidential contest. I am extremely disappointed. Um, I. I, along with many Americans, anticipated a much different result. I'm celebrating, one, because the candidate I voted for won. Um, number two, I'm celebrating because we're seeing American democracy in action. House Speaker Paul Ryan, who was critical of Trump's campaign, called to congratulate him on a big night. Trump concluded his speech this morning, saying the work is just beginning as his campaign and the White House begin the transition to a new administration. Live at the White House, Craig Boswell. Now back to you. Well, the hours of uncertainty in the presidential election also translated over into the stock market. U.S. and Asian stock markets both fell overnight. Taiwan was among several financial markets in Asia to drop ahead of the final results of the presidential election. Taiwan's stock index fell more than 240 points. Financial markets went on a wild ride overnight. At one point, Dow futures plunged 600 points. Investors say Trump's presidency is likely to bring added uncertainty on various issues, including trade policies. Kentucky Republicans also have a lot to celebrate this morning. Republicans now have control of the state house. It was a rough election night for the state's Democrats. House Speaker Greg Stumbo was among the Democrats who lost. Republican challenger Larry Brown won Stumbo's seat in District No. 95 with 53% of the vote. WKYT's Lauren Miner is joining us live in Frankfurt this morning. Uh, Lauren, what does this change up in the state house mean for Kentucky looking forward? Well, this win for the GOP is also a big win for Governor Bevin. It gives Bevin a chance to keep pushing his policies in state government. The Republican Party has now taken control of the state House of Representatives for the first time in nearly a century. This victory for Republicans means they now have control of all Southern state legislators. Kentucky State House Speaker Greg Stumbo has lost his reelection campaign and is it, it is an expect, unexpected upset. Greg Stumbo was one of at least 16 to lose their seat. Republican Larry Brown beat Stumbo 53% to 47%. Stumbo released a statement after the results came in saying, quote, the voters have spoken. I hope only the best for the district, my county, my commonwealth, and my country. Governor Bevins also made a statement after the votes came in. Good riddance. I mean, really. And I mean that sincerely. He's served for a long time, but he's outworn his welcome. 
He has been a thorn in the side of any number of good people for many years for purely political reasons. And so I don't, I'm not going to miss him one bit. And a historic night for the GOP, and I have a feeling it's something that many are going to be talking about for the next couple weeks. Reporting in Frankfurt, Lauren Miner, WKYT. Lauren, thank you. And here at WKYT, we talked with longtime political reporter Jack Brammer. He covers Frankfurt for the Herald Leader. He said with the Republicans gaining control of the House, Governor Matt Bevin's agenda will start to move more easily through the state legislature. Well, it, you'll see more conservative issues, especially on social issues and economic issues. There'll be issues that Governor Matt Bevin has been pushing. Now, there's still some uh, conservative issues that we're not sure if Republicans will grasp, such as the right to work. There seems to be some division even among Republicans on issues like that. But you'll see the social issues, any changes in taxes, economic policies will be in line with the governor's agenda. U.S. Senator Rand Paul will be keeping his seat in the U.S. Senate. He'll head back to Washington for a second term in the Senate where he says he'll continue to focus on small government. Paul easily defeated Democratic challenger Jim Gray 57 to 43 percent. Gray says he looks forward to getting back to work as Lexington's mayor. Now, Republicans also won the 6th District Congressional race. That district includes the Lexington area. Incumbent Andy Barr had no problem defeating first-time Democratic challenger Nancy Jo Kemper. Barr pulled in 61% of the vote. In his victory speech, Congressman Barr talked about the need to reduce government spending and improving health care. He also talked about the values he believes in, like living within your means and giving back. He thinks that can unite people. These are the values that after a divisive campaign season can unite this country. Congressman Barr says he is ready to put in the work both in Washington and here in Kentucky in his district. He says that work will help get the country back on the right track. Our campaign 2016 coverage continues online right now at WKYT.com. You'll find a complete list of results, interactive maps, a breakdown of the state races, and of course reaction as we gather it throughout the day. It's been a long night. It's been a long <laughs> campaign season, right? I know. Some people haven't probably still gone to bed, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's just been a couple of hours ago since uh, uh, this all really oh, got yeah. declared on the national level. Yeah. Still a lot more to see with this one. Well, the time now is 5.07 on your Wednesday. I'm going to get a check, quick, uh, quick check of the forecast. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that will happen on Little Street. We're tired. <laughs> uh, let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, now the rain's moving on out. And what happens now? We've talked about this the past couple of days on WKYT this morning. That once the rain moves on out, that cooler air drives on in here, and we will see it long gone here in just about an hour, I would say, down for the far, far southeast. You still have some sprinkles going on, but that moves on out. That cooler air, look at that. We're in the 40s in central and northern zones, 50s down south, because that coolest air hasn't made its way there yet. However, we get into your afternoon, we're sitting there right there around 50 degrees. It's going to be a pretty chilly day, and believe it or not, there will be some locations, especially northbound. You go into northern Kentucky and northeast Kentucky, Maysville, back to Vanceburg, you guys may sit around 48, 49 degrees when it's all said and done. Focus of the forecast is about these cold fronts. It's about time to hold those coats handy and keep them, keep them along with you as wherever you go in the back seat, out into, uh, out into uh, working away towards your job. So there's a lot going on with this forecast. We're going to talk about that coming up. All right, and another story with a weather angle, certainly. Mm -hmm. Ongoing wildfires in parts of Kentucky are forcing the Department for Public Health to issue a smoke inhalation advisory. That's right. Health leaders say testing shows a few counties have unhealthy air at this point. Our Michelle Chamberlain is at the WKYT Alert Desk with the details. Yeah, this is for people in eastern Kentucky. The advisory this morning is warning that the wildfire smoke can be harmful. Health leaders say air quality tests in Bell, Harlan, and Rockcastle counties showed unhealthy air and and dangers for certain people. Here's how the smoke can hurt your eyes, irritate your respiratory system, and worsen chronic heart and lung diseases. And in these areas of eastern Kentucky, you can see thick clouds of smoke. In Bell County, officials say they've received multiple calls from people concerned about all of the smoke. It just lays in here. All the smoke just gathers up and gets worse and worse, thicker and thicker, and it kind of gathers all over the county in places that fires weren't even burning. We were getting calls about people saying there was a lot of fire or a lot of smoke in their area. 
Now, we know this morning that there are three active fires in Bell County. Also, at last check, the Kentucky Division of Forestry says there are currently 33 wildfires, more than 16,000 acres that continue to burn in eastern Kentucky this morning. Bill? Thank you very much, Michelle. And you on WKYT this morning, Lexington police have issued a golden alert this hour for a man who's been missing for more than 12 hours. Stephen Rapchak was last seen at his home on Easton Road about 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Police think he drove off in a green 2002 Chevy Silverado with a Kentucky license plate 5789LA. Rapchak, who we're told has dementia, is six feet tall, weighs about 175 pounds. Police say he sometimes goes to a farm in Bourbon County, but they have checked that farm and they can't find any sign of him. A man wanted for a series of burglaries in Lexington is now in custody. Lexington police say Antonio Bell turned himself in. He was wanted for allegedly breaking into a home on Indiana Avenue, but police say he's also a suspect in burglaries in other Lexington neighborhoods. Bell has been charged with five counts of burglary along with other charges. Well, friends are remembering a fallen Jessamine County paramedic by helping the community. John Mackey died a year ago today after being hit by a car while on the job. His friends and co workers organized a blood drive in his honor in Nicholasville. They say that's a good way to continue Mackey's legacy. WKYT this morning just getting started. So good to have you along with us. Here we are Wednesday morning, the day after the election, and a lot more news is on the way. We're all still here. We made it. Well, when your child gets sick, you keep them home from school, right? But we'll find out how technology is changing that right after Micah's forecast. Got that cooler air rushing on in here. Some frosty conditions overnight and into tomorrow. We'll go over that, but there's multiple days of that. Now have that in your seven day coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Getting that rain on out of here. Now the rain's long gone. Now that cold air can usher on in here. We will feel it later on today. Now it's chilly this morning, don't get me wrong. But in toward the afternoon when you're at 50 degrees, that's a totally different story than, say, the morning hours when you're at 50 degrees. Because in the morning you expect that, right? But afternoon you don't expect it this time of year. 44 right now in Lexington. 43 as you work your way down the I 64 corridor into Montgomery County, down south into Rockcastle County. We're looking good this morning. Lincoln, Boyle, we're all right. We're sitting there in the 40s. A couple of 50s sprinkled in down toward the state border of Tennessee and Kentucky. Now we get into your afternoon, roughly 50 degrees. So you guys sitting down south, you'll be mid 50s. But everywhere else, we'll be sitting there right there in the upper 40s, lower 50s. It's going to be a pretty chilly day in store with mostly cloudy skies, and that's the problem. We have those clouds around, doesn't allow that sunshine to peek on through, and we can't really warm up temperatures with that cold air rushing on in here. So the first front is now on through, dropping temperatures about 10 to 15 degrees. Friday will be very chilly. Uh, we're sitting there in the mid to upper 50s, and then the next front comes barreling on through here on Friday night into Saturday morning. Is that going to bring rain along with it? As of right now, I don't expect any rain with this one. Nonetheless, it is going to be, bring a big shot of cold air sliding on in here. This is another day like today where you'll see highs right there in the upper 40s to lower 50s. So this is going to be another cold shot of air. I will tell you this, past this, looking past it, I don't see a huge warm up, but I do see a warm up. So there's some good news for us. We're sitting there at 51 today, 60 degrees for tomorrow. That's actually right around average for this time of year. Veterans Day looks fantastic. We're sitting mid to upper 50s. Friday night football looks good. I still don't see a good chance of rain anytime soon. Uh, there is a possibility the next couple of mornings of having a frost, uh, frosty starts on your windshield there. However, you get off towards your weekend and the frost is no doubt about it. That's 100% that's, uh, confident. Will we hit a freeze there this weekend? That is the question for the weekend. This is going to be very chilly on Saturday, guys. We're sitting at 49 degrees. If you're heading down to the Tennessee game in Knoxville, it'll be still pretty chilly. It won't be 49, but we're still talking about mid 50s, so it's still going to be very chilly there, too. So there's a lot going on. Let me tell you something about Neyland Stadium. Yeah. You don't want to be in the shade on a cold uh, day. Right. <laughs> and that's a big stadium. It's got a lot of shade. Right yeah. there on the, way, out in the river. Yeah. Oh, I bet. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it all goes. Uh, Micah, thank you very much. When you're child is sick, the normal rule is to keep them home from school. But one child in Wisconsin just sends something else to take his place. Grady Loper is a fourth grader who has a rare condition. It keeps him home from school a lot. So instead of missing out on class, he remotely controls a robot from his laptop. It has a microphone and camera allowing Grady to be in class without risking infection. He can also interact with his teacher and classmates as well. 
So that is pretty cool. Yeah, there you go. Very, yeah, innovative. Yeah. 517, our time on WKYT this morning. It's good to have you with us the morning after the presidential election. If you're just waking up and haven't heard, Donald Trump has been elected president of the United States. We'll continue our coverage throughout the morning. Still a lot more to come. When we come back, we'll take a look at your money. Good morning. Welcome back in. 521 the time on WKYT this morning. Just getting word the Herald Leader is mm -hmm. delayed this morning. You might imagine a lot to uh, get I into wonder print. why. Right. <laughs> Donald Trump's win this morning is making waves in the financial world. And Facebook is rolling out a brand new feature for your photos. Jill Wagner has the latest on your money. Donald Trump's surprise win and uncertainty surrounding a Trump presidency is shocking financial markets, which had priced in a Hillary Clinton victory. Markets across Asia and Europe are tumbling at one point tonight. Dow futures were pointing to a more than 800 point drop at the open. They have recovered a bit after Hillary Clinton conceded the race. SeaWorld says it's cutting costs after reporting weak profits over the summer. The company says the number of visitors at its theme parks dropped slightly because of bad weather and fewer guests from Latin America. SeaWorld has been struggling to win back customers since a 2013 documentary accused it of mistreating killer whales. Facebook's testing a new feature to make your photos and live videos look like famous works of art. The social media giant says the technique will allow you to apply a filter like the look of a Van Gogh painting. To your images in real time. Facebook calls the feature a breakthrough in artificial intelligence and plans to make it widely available on the Facebook app soon. And that is your CBS Money Watch report. For more, follow me on Twitter at Jill Wagner CBS. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Jill Wagner. The football cats ready for Tennessee and offensive coordinator Eddie Grand said it was a good day of practice with edge and focus on Tuesday. Grand said there were probably 15 plays he'd like to have back against Georgia, including that third down fade route, which fell incomplete and the cats had to settle for a field goal. What he said the cats didn't have Saturday was good communication. It's kind of crazy because I don't know if you get up too much for a game and you, and you get they got just it got too big you know for just a little bit but we made some communication errors that we have not been making and so you know we just talked about it and said what's going on you know and and uh, so obviously today that was a huge emphasis on uh, talking and they were loud and they were especially down there you're gonna you're gonna have to be loud and you're gonna communicate is gonna be communication is gonna be huge in everything that we do in that environment We've got a city rematch Friday, the second round of the high school football playoffs. Tate's Creek and Lafayette, the Roy Walton Bowl, part deux. The Generals won 50 28 just three weeks ago. Lafayette opening up that game in the second half, but what about beating a team twice in less than a month? Uh, my personal opinion is very hard to play someone and beat them twice. Um, because you play, you got a chance to go in and make some adjustments and attack what they do. So it's very very hard, in my opinion, to do that. After cruising to a pair of easy exhibition victories, Kentucky basketball opens the regular season Friday night against Stephen F. Austin. John Calipari has a young, talented team, which should get better and better. Freshman point guard De'Aaron Fox has been impressive in the preseason, and he knows his team has a long way to go. We still have to work on everything. I mean, we're still, you know, getting better as players, as, uh, as teammates. Uh, defensively, we we'll probably still know where we're at, uh, rather it's on the ball, help defense, just because we're young and uh, sometimes guys just, you know, just get lazy on a, on a play. I mean, it's a long shot clock. So, uh, I mean, we're just, we're trying to mature as players. I mean, really, really fast. We're still 18, 19 years old. I mean, our oldest players like Mike and Derek, but it's not too many of them. So, I um, mean, we're still just gelling together. And that is a look at sports. Have a great day.